Yeah, I'll kick off on a Ryzen first. So FY21 result yesterday. Look, effectively a flat EBIT result, um, albeit it was a slight beat with one-offs. Um, you know, what really stands out with this company is just how much cash flow it pumps out. So over $700 million of cash flow, including asset sales, that compares to a market cap of about 7.6 bill. Take out the asset sales and it's around about sort of like a high $500 million number. So very high sort of free cash yield. Um, first time FY22 guidance, they're now guiding at EBITDA and a sustaining CapEx level. So it's closer to cash flow. Now at the midpoint, it's implying a, a flat to slight decline in earnings going into FY22. Now, it's kind of around about where consensus was already, so don't expect any major movements on the consensus front. The story with this one is very much coal and network, which um, um, are facing their own earnings pressures, providing the cash flow to support that dividend. Remember, the dividend is 100% payout of earnings and also to invest in the bulk business. Uh, so the bulk is basically everything that's not coal. Um, and they're aiming to double that business over the next decade. Um, to me, bulk is a lower quality business than coal and network. It's shorter contract terms, it's shorter or smaller contract size. It competes partly against trucking, so the margins are lower and the counterparties are lower quality than what we see in the rest of the business. So yes, there's growth, but it's into the lower quality earnings stream. Um, net result, at least in the short term, is flat to declining earnings. In terms of uh, buyback, look, there's there's about $900 million of debt capacity they think they've actually got. Uh, they didn't pull the trigger on a buyback yesterday. I think some of the market may be disappointed by that. They are keeping their powder dry for investment opportunities within that bulk business. They said there was a, a couple of live opportunities they're looking at at the moment. I have kept the buyback in my numbers. I think that is the benchmark at which they have to judge their bulk investment. So I think if they don't get those investment opportunities away, the, the buyback is back on. Um, in terms of valuation, target price, target price just declined a little bit on earnings changes, so it's at 406. Um, share price has been pretty strong recently, so I've pulled that rating back from a hold, sorry, from an ad to a hold. Look, short term basis, this thing still looks very cheap, right? It's yielding close to 7%. It's with 70% uh, 70, 70 franking. Trading multiples are very low, you know, EBITDA multiple seven times, PE at 14. But the the long-term valuation, valuation issues still remain. So sustainability and ESG haven't gone away given 80% of the earnings are still um, uh, coming from servicing the coal market. And I'm just a little bit concerned that the share price may now drift um, given the news flow from the investor day and from the uh, uh, FY21 result is now out in the market. Also, for those of you that may be um, looking at Horizon uh, as a way to participate in this M&A uh, wave that's coming through the infrastructure space. It's not going to happen with Horizon. It's got a 15% shareholder cap that's in legislation. Uh, they'd need to remove that um, before they would be a target. And I think with the current Queensland government, that is very unlikely. So uh, at the moment, hold on Horizon. Uh, Transurban, uh, FY21's result year, yesterday also. Look at the EBITDA line, earnings down 3%, but that included new assets coming online during the period. Free cash was down 14%. Obviously, traffic uh, continued to be impacted by the COVID um, movement restrictions. That was both in FY21, and they showed some data yesterday which showed some fairly material reductions in traffic in the early stages of FY22 as a result of the lockdowns that have been occurring. Look, I know we're looking at that sort of scenario right now, but this is a business with some serious leverage um, to uh, tra traffic recovery coming through. It's got a largely fixed cost base. So I think over the, over the next uh, two to three years, as traffic recovers back to long-term trend, we could see the earnings double off their COVID lows. So real kicker coming through there. Um, DPS, 36 and a half cents for the uh, FY21. I think that could grow to over 60 cents within the next sort of two to three years. A couple of very meaningful pieces of news flow to come through from the company. Um, first up, you'd know that they've been bidding for or announced that they intend on bidding for the remaining 49% of WestConnex, so the New South Wales road network that New South Wales government is selling down. Um, that's supposed to conclude by the end of September. 
Transurban has said or said yesterday that it intends on raising equity if it is if its consortium is uh, successful in um, in winning that bidding war, um, and if that's the case, they'll do it through an entitlement offer. So those of you who have put client money into entitlement offers by Transurban previously, you know they actually go pretty well. Uh, it's it's a good way to actually deploy incremental capital. Second thing uh, out there is the Westgate Tunnel Project. They've had uh, issues to do with contaminated soil disposal. Um, piece of news that came out yesterday was that Transurban basically acknowledged that each of the three parties involved in that project, so that's Transurban, that's the Victorian government and that's the builder, need to make a financial contribution to get this project through to uh, project completion. They referenced an independent report that basically said there's probably a $3.3 billion cost overrun. So just to put that in context, the original um, uh, construction cost or project budget was $6 billion. So this thing's been an absolute uh, debacle. Um, so I've put $1.1 billion through my numbers now for Transurban. That takes about $0.40 cents off up front, uh, MPV basis, because there are benefits that come with that spend. Uh, in terms of tax shields, etc., that reduces down to 24 cents. So, look, it's it's debt capacity that could have been uh, better spent elsewhere, investing in um, in growing earning streams. Short term forecast: Look, I've, I've had to downgrade because of what's happening with the lockdowns um, and rebasing to the second half performance. Um, still assuming that traffic recovers to trend by calendar year 22. That could be a bullish forecast, but let's just see how it goes. Long-term benefits come through from me uh, feeding through just updates to CPI and long-term interest rate assumptions. Target price up now 14.26. Stock closed for uh, 14.03 yesterday. So 